All right, friends. Well, everything with this thing was going great until it wasn't. And sadness has indeed struck once more. So we have encountered our potentially first very serious issue. And I'm not sure what we're going to find or even if it's going to be salvageable at this point. But we will find out very shortly, right after this. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man. This is the 1355 Heritage tractor. Oliver in red, white, and blue. And we were doing so great. We had everything working. You know, the only thing I thought was wrong was our steering cylinder is messed up, which we'll tackle that another time because the thing that's going on now is way more serious. I was putting it around out there in the field and something just started seeming not quite right. And I realized that it has no oil pressure now for whatever reason. I don't know. Took off the sending unit, started it back up, nothing. Took off the oil filter, nothing. I even tried pouring some oil backwards through it, hoping that maybe it just lost its prime or something. No dice. So we're going to drain out the oil, take the pan back off, pull the oil pump out, and see what could possibly be our trouble. Really, there are several things that could be uh, possibly the easiest or least destructive one was that maybe the spring on the relief thing has self-destructed and it's just not letting it build any oil pressure. Also, it could be that the roll pin in the gear in the top sheared off and it's not turning now. It could be that maybe there was... A crack in it like water had gotten in over time and the thing was cracked and then after we ran it it you know finally blew out and that was the end of that I don't know but one thing's for sure we got to drain out all the oil we just put in it so I got two jugs cleaned up they don't look like it but they really are clean inside because we're gonna save on this oil and reuse it again when we put it back together because it's brand new it hasn't really been doing anything yeah, it's super duper sadness. I'm hoping I can get that thing out of here without taking that whole balancer thing out. I don't know, but we'll find out soon. I'm also wondering if this, in fact, had not been going on before, and that might've been part of the reason they tore it down, you know, because this pan was partially off and that never, didn't really make sense to me for a head repair why they would also pull the pan. So I'm wondering if it lost the oil pressure way back when and Farmer John just took it apart and then he died or whatever and never got it finished. So we may be discovering someone else's previous issue, but we can't do anything about it now except move on. This is not exactly what I had envisioned that we would be doing. If I had even remotely suspected that this was an issue, I would have pulled the oil pump out when I had this off the first time. But I didn't think there was anything wrong. It looked, everything looked good. I didn't see any metal pieces in the pan. You know, some people say, oh, well, if it's doing this, it's probably chucked out like thrust bearings. Ooh, that's kind of, it's already made that oil kind of milky. Well, that's nice. Maybe we're not gonna save this oil. Uh, but anyway, what I'm getting at, now I see this, I'm wondering if oh, the block's not cracked or something, but I think that's just stirred up moisture from what was in here, because the radiator still looks the same level, but anyway, I don't know what I was saying, I'm just super duper sad about it, that's what I'm, I'm really saying. I should probably, if I was smart, I would have this jug ready too, to swap out. Surely it hasn't burned that much oil in the time we did this, because I poured in more than this two and a half gallon jug. Hmm. Makes me wonder now.
I mean, we already got farther than I thought we would because I figured this old engine would be garbage and start knocking as soon as we got it started. And it actually runs super duper good. It just, <laughs> it doesn't have any oil pressure now. And that ain't good for longevity, anyway. I bet those rings are seated though. Man, talk about running them in dry. All right. I'm not a patient man, so I don't know how long we're gonna let this strip. Because I really want to see what's what. So, we may just put the plug in and go on with our lives. Don't know. Oh, sadness, sadness, sadness. But, we're pulling stuff out of fence rows, you know, so... I can't, I can't be too upset that we discovered some, some trouble. Like I said before, I didn't think we'd even make it this far, quite honestly. I thought we'd find a horrible, catastrophic rod failure or something, you know. All right. I remember some of these didn't fit. The old, uh, whatchamacallit. So... And I should have been thinking ahead, and I didn't. What else is there? What else is there? And we glued her on here pretty good, so I bet this go around, we're probably gonna have to buy a gasket. But this might have effectively tabled our heritage tractor project. And you know it figures because today in the mail the new starter came. So now we got a new starter for something that doesn't even run. Um can we do this? Oh I do not like that milkiness. I'm hoping that it just washed out the block real good. In which case, maybe that was good that this is happening and it's sacrificed our oil, but at least it it washed the moisture out of the thing. Because I'm, I'm sure it had a lot up in there from, uh, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I see the oil pump. And it should be easy to get to. I'm hoping that I can just take the screen with it. Is that going to work? Or is that foolishness? Oh, that is foolishness. And I know why. Because I was using a bigger size on those rounded out pan bolts. I'm hoping this is a simple repair where I can take the one out of the other tractor and be back in business. But I'm really hoping I find something visibly wrong with this other one. Because if I don't find anything visibly wrong, then we got a bad problem. Because I don't know if it would just be that the bearings are so wore out in the motor that that's all she wrote. You know, time is going to tell here. Now, was I smart enough to bring the long extension along? I don't think I was, because I'm a moron. I knew that I would take it, because they're way up in there. <laughs> okay, yeah, just leave it there, and I'll stop by and get it. All right. See thanks. you. Yep, bye-bye. All right, well, now we're, apparently we're going to be rebuilding a carburetor on a Ford car. But that's okay. I like money. And it looks like I'm going to need some to fix my junk here. Now, for some reason or another, I can't find my long extension. And I know we had it earlier today. And this one ain't going to be long enough. But that is the size. So, let's get that rigged up. Alright. i got enough extensions now to reach all the way to where the parts are being made. So... In the land of the chopsticks. Okay. 
Yeah, that is like an aluminum or pop metal housing. And I think I see a crack from here. I might just be wishful thinking, but that would explain a lot of what is happening. I also enjoy laying right under there and getting the oil all over me, but such is life. Wonder how difficult this is going to be to put back in there. Wonder how difficult it's going to be. It's going to take about four hands, and I'm talking like little, little person hands, because I. That was one nice thing when we worked at the shop. The one guy's son was just a little feller. There's something important fell off probably. And uh, anyway, we'd have him do stuff when we couldn't get our fat meat hooks in there. He could climb in there like in a cab of a 7000 series tractor. He could wad himself up in there a lot easier than a big fat boy like me. All right, well, now it's obvious sadness to the point that it's not going to let me do what I want to do. And why am I not surprised? Well, what kind of tool are we going to need to make this happen? We're going to probably need a shorter extension, a universal joint, a tiny set of hands, So I'm going to try, first of all, I'm going to try a wobble extension and another wobble extension to see if I can't get enough curvature to get up there to this bolt. Because if that don't work, I ain't real sure how a guy's boat to get her out of there. I guess he could take the stubby ratchet and go up in here. Is there enough room? I can get my hand up there. But, geez, I didn't want to take the pickup tube off with the pump, but I think I'm going to have to. Or take it off the pump before I can get this bolt out because I don't think this is happening. Here. I mean, I'm so close. It could just work, you know? That's what I never understand. Why can't it just cut me some slack life? Give me give me one day of success. Uh, don't look like it's going to be today with my day of success. I wonder if... Huh. I mean, it's so, so close. It should go, but it just won't. Or have I been moving it and it's an optical illusion? That is possible, too. I can't hardly see what's going on. We're working way up inside, and I can't... There's really no good way to let you see what's happening. I wish there was. Man... I'm like half a, half a socket off of being able to make this work. And there went my socket. So now my next choice is, can I use, what could I use to get up there to it? I don't think I tried a universal yet, did I? Tell me if I did. I don't think I did. This would be a good candidate. Well, let me just show you what we're dealing with here. So here we are, way up in there. Right back in that corner is the bolt. There is not enough room for me to get the uh, socket extension. There's a little piece, like a a gusset they made in this aluminum pump and it is stopping me now here if you can see this maybe that's not it but that is where i believe it might possibly be cracked that might just be an illusion but 
uh, when we get this out of here we'll be able to look it over real good so just enjoy my terrible view of nothing until then I don't know what else to to tell you I thought I was going to be doing so lovely by not uh... oh shoot I thought I was on there not taking that pickup screen off but I'm thinking I got to I don't think I can I'm going to have to take it off so I can reach my hand up through here and yeah also the phone is driving me nuts again okay I'm tired of fighting pickup tube is going to be deleted and if we have to buy gaskets before we go together so be it because I can't have this I mean well there's one this is delicate surgery and we're not doing it very well you know it's more the joy that maybe you get some view of the action it's so close I don't know if I said that a minute ago but this would be a perfect candidate for me to get some of those flex headed sockets I think that would be perfect for this job because they're a lot shallower than a regular socket with where they bend and I think that's what's biting me. That extra little, that extra little bit would really gain me a bunch in this situation. In this situation. Oh, fudge nuts. Okay. There's another one. Now I guess we're going to have to go with a wrench because I don't see how I'm going to get it without... Yeah, it's not going to let me... No, it won't. Okay. okay. Well, now what we're going to want to do is drop this whole pickup thing in the dirt so that it's miserably dirty and then not salvageable, you know? That would be our next affair. Okay, now this should come off because there's nothing holding it anymore. Uh-oh, what was that that fell? Other than oil in my face. Oh, how are we gonna get in there? Would it help if I was in there with the... That might actually do it. Maybe if I'm up in there with the ratchet. I want to see what's happening, but I can't get it done. Well, you're going to have to leave. Because this is not going to be fit for human consumption. Okay, I'll bring you back. I figured out a way. I've changed sizes about three times, but... We got a quarter inch, 13 millimeter socket on a quarter inch extension, coupled to an adapter to go to 3 8 drive, coupled to a 3 8 universal, 3 8 short extension, and a 3 8 ratchet. And I think it's gonna let us get it. We're turning it at least. Now how long will it work before some other failure in? Incurs? I don't know. Uh, in theory, that old pump should be falling out of there anytime and hitting us in the face. Oh, jeez. I emailed John Bender, but I haven't heard from him yet. If he's got any words of wisdom on what is about to befall me. Okay, there's some more stuff that fell out, which I assume is just the fastener in the washer, and it is. Okay. Now, will this just drop out of here? Oh, 
on the parts book, it shows two retainers. Two. Two bolts. So now, why isn't this pump happily dropping out of here? Is it because it's been welded in there with heat? I don't know, boys. I don't know. Oh, because you can't twist it. It's got to come straight down, I guess. According to this. Which ain't going to let us do that either, is it? So I have to rotate the engine a little to get it to spin that spiral cut gear out of there because it won't let you rotate it at all. I bet that's what I'm going to have to do. I bet if you rotate it just a little bit, it will. And of course I put the inspection covers back in so I can't do this from here easily. I mean, I'd like to be able to just pry against it and get it. I guess that ain't gonna happen. Let's get the cover back out again. Let's see if I can make a terrible life choice here. It ought to pull out of there. It ought to just turn the pump as it comes out. And it's not doing that. So does that mean the pump's locked up? And it sheared the pin off? And it's just enough I can't pull it out by hand? Or what's happening here? All I know is it ain't coming and it should. There's nothing else that looks like it could be holding this. I mean, we've dropped down a good ways. So why won't she come out? She's a tight fit, I see that. But I don't understand it. How are you supposed to service it if it doesn't come out of there? I mean... Well, friends, I think I'm going to have to go read the book more because it don't look to me like I'm going to get this in a successful way. I guess I could disassemble it up here, which I really don't want to do. And I really hope that this means I don't have to pull the bottom half of the block loose to get this out. I bet you that's what a guy's supposed to do. Oh, that's stupid. Why would they do that to a guy? What could possibly be? It's the bottom half of that block that's holding it. I mean, it just will not quite let it come out of there. All right, so I read the book and sadness, in fact, follows me all the days of my life. It says in the book, the way to fix that, or to get the oil pump out, Take the front axle off and drop the oil sump, which is what that is. This big piece right here. So what I'm going to do is stick it back up in there and then see if I can get the thing apart. If I can take the cover of their top piece off the pump, in theory, the long shaft and gear should stay with the body of the pump up in there. And then I should get the cover and one gear down this away and then if that stuff hopefully in that cover I will see what is the obvious problem because in theory just by what I've felt so far the gear is still connected to the shaft because I can't just pull it out so we'll see if that's I'm hoping that the problem is in that relief thing but we'll have to see if the pump body's cracked we're gonna have to do it anyway and we might as well just wait till this winter and do it when we mess with the clutch so because then we'll have to split it anyway so we can just take the axle off take the motor out flip it over work on the clutch put it all back together and be done so i'm going to go ahead and stick the pump up in there again and tighten it down and then i'll probably not in this video uh but at some point i'll show you what i found if i find anything so that's where we're going to leave it right there all right so where do we stand on this sadness that's where we stand and it's obviously it's the next day and we're having just as good a luck gopro battery died instantly for some reason so what i was saying before it cut me off in the dark last night i uh ended up taking the top 
or bottom off the oil pump, however you want to look at it, and it is sadness. This is the nastiest oil pump I have ever seen in my life. It is full, full of this gritty, flaky stuff, which I'm not entirely convinced isn't part of the aluminum of the pump body that started to corrode. The two gears are very, very rusty. I mean, they've even, even like on here where they were sitting, I can run my finger over and feel every tooth. It's so rusty and nasty. And the pump does not turn. I laid under there and rolled the motor over by hand, nothing. And based on what I saw, the way it felt when I was trying to pull the whole thing out of there, I'm betting that when we finally do get it out, we are going to find that the shaft is twisted off in the pump because the gears didn't move at all, but pulling it down, you could feel that other gear dropping out of there. So I don't know, maybe the key is just sheared in the top of it, but this, this oil pump is done. So I'm thinking what has happened here is this was probably the original failure that parked this tractor and I just discovered it you know a little at a time and what I think probably took place in the order of operations the tractor started doing something you know whatever it may be that they ran it out of oil or got it hot but see the inside of the motor didn't really look like that so I'm thinking what happened is he probably like when they realized it had a problem he pulled the either the head off first or the pan off first I'm betting that he probably pulled the pan off and it had some trash in it. He cleaned that out, didn't see anything wrong. So he just kind of lightly put that back up like we found it. And then they pulled the head off thinking that it had a problem with the head and that's why it wouldn't do whatever it wasn't doing. And the puzzling thing about this to me is the thing runs like a top. I mean, it starts excellent and it runs good. The only thing we don't know is if it will run hot, which would be an indication that probably the motor got too hot at some point in its life. I did not really run it all that much, but I should have, I should have, that's my fault, I should have at least got the dash, like the oil pressure light hot wired up before we ever tried to run it, and I should have pulled that cinder out again, but why I didn't was when I pulled the valve cover off the second time, which you didn't see on camera when I double checked the valves, it looked like it had been putting oil up there. So I didn't question it. But now what I'm thinking is maybe that was oil that had hung on there when I filled it up and it kind of, you know, had dripped down in there off of the rockers, you know, maybe some of it hung on the shaft or what, I don't know. Maybe it was oil that was still in the passageways and it worked its way out. But it looked to me like it was getting oil, so... And I hadn't really run it other than just cranking it. So I thought, well, that's the appropriate amount of oil for what you would see. But I should have plumbed in a gauge, really, would have been my best bet. I have that thing. Actually, this tractor provided me now. When somebody made that adapter for the Ford-style sending unit, I can keep that piece and use it to make a test uh, thing there. I can screw in a mechanical gauge in these and then check. So... Yeah, it's pretty sad because I think the damage is done. Whatever's done is done. It still runs. I could start it up right now, but it doesn't have any oil pressure. You know, I uh, that day after working on the gauges in that video and I realized we had some issue, I pulled the filter off and poured oil backwards down through there thinking that maybe the pump had lost its prime and I could fool it into... Uh, you know, having oil pressure, no go. I emailed John Bender right after that, and his email was the same kind of thought process like I had. He said, you could try to pour oil backwards and see if you get it to prime and whatever. And I said, well, I said, when he replied, I sent him back a message and said, it, I've already, already went down the road and said, it's pretty bad. I got the pump apart and it's junk. So uh, now the plan moving forward, what does a guy do? Well, the, I guess, most appropriate thing to do would be to totally overhaul this engine and, you know, go again. However, I'm not convinced that that's what I want to try yet. Although, <laughs> I guess what you don't know is I can't get the oil pump out without taking that sump off. It's like I said before. I guess I did say that in that other video. 
So at the very least, you got to pull the front axle off to be able to drop that sump away. But we also have a stuck clutch, so we need to take it apart anyway there to get the clutch out. So I'm thinking we just need to split, you know, take the front axle off, roll it away, pull the motor off, and then we can address our clutch issue, which is, you can see it's a rusty mess. Uh, and then we can pull the sump off. And I think what my plan is going to be, the new oil pumps are like a hundred bucks. I'm thinking of just slapping a new oil pump in, you know, seeing what, what it looks like in the oil gallery, if there's trash in there, or if it never made it that far or what, you know, if I put a new oil pump in it and then check out our clutch situation, I might disassemble the parts tractor and see if it's got the same clutch and set up and put, if it's good, I'll just slap that on. If not, I think the whole new complete kit was like $500 for that green one, but we don't know which style we have until we take this apart. But I'm really thinking seriously about just putting an oil pump in it and going again and seeing what we got because, you know, it's probably going to smoke, I would bet. It didn't smoke before, but that's because it didn't have any oil, so <laughs> oil pressure. So I, I'm betting that it's going to be a tired horse when we when it finally has oil pressure, but I kind of feel like I want to try it. I want to see what, how bad it really is. And then, you know, the temptation is when you have that flipped over and you're taking that out, do you pull all the bearings and see about, yo, know, just roll in new bearings? No, I'm afraid to do that because you're going to find more sadness. I bet you're going to see, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Uh, I really don't want to, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a sad situation, you know. I don't think that we destroyed anything that wasn't already destroyed before because I there obviously was an issue with this tractor that made them tear it down and go both into the head and underneath. And I think we figured it out and they couldn't figure it out. They never took the pump apart. You know, looking in there, you would have never thought there was anything wrong. It looked clean, just there was nothing wrong looking. So that's what I'm thinking is probably going to happen moving forward where we are going to just waste a lot of time and tear it down and put a pump in it and then put it back together and then find its junk and tear it down later and overhaul it, you know? But I don't want to waste a lot of money on overhauling something that I'm not going to use right now. So if I could get it where it runs and has oil pressure and I could move it around, even if it smokes, we got a running driving tractor, we can address the rest of it sometime when we don't have uh, anything else to do. But I just... I don't know. I just feel like there's still some unknowns. I'd like to I'd like to run it a while and work out the rest of the kinks on the thing. And then we, if we take it down totally to like paint it and do everything, then we could overhaul the engine. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to take place. But it's sadness. I, I never would have guessed. <laughs> I mean, looking at this, the pickup tube is clean. There was nothing nothing remotely about it that made it look like it was going to be so full of garbage so i'm betting that this happened way back when and like i said that was their original issue with the tractor was that it lost oil pressure and they didn't know what to do so they just started in and uh, i picked it up not knowing what to expect and we already got farther than like i said what i thought we would have i figured it would have horrendous knocking and you know or never run no, no compression at all and it runs great that's what's so puzzling about it so that tells me it it must not be damaged too awfully badly yet if it starts that easy and you know it runs so good so if it wasn't doing those things I feel like it probably, you know, then we would have a garbage motor, but kind of really makes me nervous because that first day when we pull started, it didn't have any water in it and it wasn't getting any oil pressure probably, or very little, if any, you know, maybe it was turning at first and then it didn't shortly after because, because what made me notice it was I was driving it out there, putting it around and something just didn't seem right all at once. And I'm just wondering if that's when it lost its oil pressure like maybe it 
it worked for a little bit and then finally it got enough of that garbage wound up in there that that snapped off a rusty shaft in there i don't know we're grasping for straws at this point but we still got something it's just not as good of a deal probably as we originally had but you know i fully intended that we would probably have to overhaul it at some point so that's probably now going to happen so anyway that's where we'll leave this one sad as it may be as always if you enjoy my videos give them a thumbs up leave a comment and tell me how dumb you think i am or if by some slim chance you liked it say that thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.